what's up friends welcome back to another episode of the tv tray sessions here at guitar talk with todd thank you so much for checking in and joining me today please hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner find me on facebook at todd bb music got a quick video today for all you guitar lovers out there i want to talk about the infamous volute that is on gibson guitars from about 1969 to about 1981. I'm going to get some close-ups on this too. But ultimately the volute, I'll show you right now, is this piece right here on the back of the headstock where the neck meets the headstock. Gibson put these on from about 69 to about 1981. By 1982 they were gone. But uh, the thought was that this is the most fragile place on a Gibson guitar because of the headstock angle. And that's usually the first thing that snaps off if your Gibson hits the floor and falls off a stand. So they started putting the volutes on here in about 1969. It's just an extra mass of wood. You can see right there. And that uh, kind of was the thought was that it was supposed to give more support. So if you did have this fall, that was going to help it from snapping off. Um, by 1982, that was gone and they had gone back to this style again. This is a 2003 model and you can see it does not have it right here. Uh, so the players have debated for years whether that actually does do anything or not. Okay, so looking at these side by side... This is the 1978 Les Paul Custom Silver Burst, and this is a 2003 Les Paul Custom Silver Burst. This does not have the volute, this does. So you can see it's definitely thicker here behind the headstock, right where the neck meets it, and here it is not. Okay, so zooming in on these two, you can see uh, there on the left is the... 1978 silver burst there's the volute right there and then on the 2003 of course it was long gone so again supposed to provide stability to the guitar where the headstock breaks happen um some people claim that was just a complete waste of time and it never did anything i don't know what do you guys think comment below all right you can see on this headstock right here this is the 78 Les Paul Custom. You can see how that's yellowed and the binding on the side is even yellowed as well. And there's that volute right on the back of the headstock. It's like a big bump that sticks out right there. Like I said, supposedly for the whole purpose of making that headstock stability stronger if this was to hit the floor, God forbid. And here is the headstock on the 2003 uh, not yellowed at all, and of course no volute on the back of this one, and that's of course how these currently look and have looked on Gibson headstocks since about 1982 when they removed those. I think ultimately Gibson went back to not having the volute. This is the 78 and uh, this one has it, but I think they went back to not having it because that's kind of, you know, we're always throwing back to 59 or late 50s as far as Les Pauls go. That's, you know, the holy grail. Uh, and ultimately, everything you do leads back to <laughs> let's get everything more 59-ish, uh, which is what everything, you know, leads to, it seems like, in the end with most players. So I think they did this, and by, you know, 82, it was just get it off of there and uh you know the appeal was to have it cosmetically look more like a late 50s model and um like i said this other guitar that i have here is a 2003 les paul custom silver burst i'll put the links below i did a review on this one before and i'm going to be doing a review in an upcoming episode on the 78 and uh this one ultimately does not have the volute and i think this is you know definitely a throwback now more to 50 style gibson which is what we're currently having this is being recorded in 2024 so 
From 82 on, I think we just kept this and we've tried to get more and more back to the classic years. But uh, just interesting, these two. Interesting looking at these two guitars side by side. Uh, you know, they're both silver burst. This one is obviously aged a lot <laughs> from 1978. It's almost got a goldish color to it. Uh, this one's 21 years old now. It's old enough to drink, but um, it's still got the vibrant shine to it. and pretty much looks like it did right out of the gate the day it was born. But um, 1978 silver bursts had like an automotive paint on them, which is what this is. This does not have the exact same type of paint, even though it's the same type of finish. So that supposedly has a lot to do with it, but the binding and everything on this guitar is yellowed. We will be doing a review on this guitar in an upcoming episode. We already did review this one I'm holding here, and I'll put the link down below. But like I said, ultimately for today, we're talking about the Volute on these guitars and uh like i said from 69 to 81 gibson put those behind the headstock on their guitars to strengthen that up in case it took a fall and by 82 they were gone what do you guys think was the volute a joke and kind of a complete waste of time do you have an experience um that you experienced or someone you know where maybe a guitar did take a fall and you think the volute actually kept it from snapping off we've all seen broken gibson headstocks it's just part of the game pretty much um you know if you if you're around gibsons but uh comment below if you had an experience with the volute what do you think of it and um, do you own a guitar that has one? Do you like them? Do you not like them? Do you think Gibson should put them back on? Or should they have never have put them on to begin with? So uh, let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Thank you so much for joining and checking in with me today. Please hit that subscribe button in the lower right hand corner. Find me on Facebook at Todd BB Music. And we will see you all again. Stay safe and love your dogs. Take care.